Um, I wanted to talk to you guys real quick of what happened to me yesterday with the whole offer because I think the understanding the market is very important. Uh, and I just want you guys to know because I know you guys are dealing with consumers and customers and all that stuff, but would you guys believe that somebody wrote a better offer than my 690 offer? Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? It's already like 70,000 above asking price. Yeah. And this buyer said seven day contingency on inspection. You guys ready for this? Removal of appraisal contingency and removal of loan contingency. Damn. Tell me how I'm gonna mess with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? What I'm trying to get to, to what I'm trying to get you guys to understand, there's some desperate ass buyers out there. Yeah. Hey, okay. uh, and we gotta find them. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you uh, if they do that. Do you still do an inspection though? I do. Yeah. Yeah, I always do the inspection because um, the inspection is so important for them to not come back and say you told me. Because believe it, it's all it's all fun and games until there's an issue and then they try to pin you against it. And these people are really good at it. Like when I first started, and this is something that's gonna happen to you guys. You guys are gonna sell a bunch of homes. You guys are gonna sell so many homes that some of those homes, people are gonna wanna come after you. And it happens to me a lot of the times. I'm almost prepared always for that, but they're gonna close escrow, all fun and games. All of a sudden you close escrow and their plumbing goes bad. And it hasn't gone bad in ever. All of a sudden they buy the house and yeah, and they all just suggest a <laughs> yeah, something, yeah. So all of a sudden they think that Abraham, the guy that sold them the house, is the one responsible for the for the repair of that. Oh, you sold me the house, you're the guy in the nice car, you're the guy that always wears a tie and you're in the suit. Like, I know you made commission, you want to pay for it. Can I give you guys a tip? Absolutely not. <laughs> but you know the only way to be confident for, for doing that and not giving throwing throwing money away is to really cross your T's and dot your I's and even even if they were to remove the uh, the inspection contingency, I would still have the inspection contingency. That inspection contingency is only for these for the buyer's uh, knowledge, even if they've removed it for the seller. Because what that means is that they can't say because of an inspection, I want money, I want repairs, because that has been addressed from the beginning. But can they still get an inspection for themselves just to feel good about it? Yeah, hell yeah, they can. Why not? I would say get an inspection and everything, sewer tank and everything. Um, but yeah, that happened. So you know what I did instead of waiting because I was very scared of my client. I called the client right away and I'm like, hey, I want you to know that they weren't bluffing. Somebody beat us. And of course, um, my client was like, oh man. And already in my mind, I was thinking he thinks I'm the one that didn't do the job, even though I'm the one that suggested all this stuff. Maybe I should have suggested a little bit higher, but I already thought 690 was a very, very high amount. So what do I do? I give the bad news. And the same moment I give the bad news, I send out an option. Like, hey, here's the next house that's available. Let's go check it out and let's, let's buy it. I'm just trying to tell you guys because it is a very normal environment. I know you've got <laughs> like three, four offers you've rejected. Yeah. And you cannot stop because those clients, the minute that they see you discouraged, they're going to get discouraged and they're going to go talk to Abraham, who's been calling every okay. single day in the morning. That's ready to take them to show holes. I got a, I was telling Alejandro, I got a call from uh, a lady that I spoke uh, to and I left a message and then I spoke to her, she called me back and her son called me yesterday uh, saying that uh, her, his parents want to buy, they're like in the 68 range. Yeah. Um, they they get uh, social security and the father also gets a pension and That's then great. and they, they it's about 40 grand with just the mother and the father but then i said but you would have to help him too to actually do the purchase what did he say he owns a townhome already and he bought it 20 years ago but he told me what do i need i said look at the list of documents that i sent to the lead list yeah uh give me your paperwork and when can, can you have it by friday he's like i'm gonna try to have it sooner for you yeah so he's gonna help out. He, he, there's another forty, so eighty in total. Uh, but they they're ready to get qualified. And I'm happy you understand that because now you're looking at it from a norm, numbers perspective. The yeah. old you would have been like, yeah, come on in with forty, and we don't need anybody else. We'll get it done. But now you know, and you're like, hey, give me some more cosigners. And now you see how you're processing the numbers a lot more efficiently. And there's people out there, but those those phone calls, those messages, and this is something I haven't showed you guys, but. A lot of people don't need voice messages. I see it as a quick 30 second commercial for myself. Like, hey, you know what? This is Jesse all over again. Just calling you from GPP. 
see, I just want you to know that I'm still in front of you. And I'll tell you from personal experience, sometimes I get a hundred messages and I get so lost in the mess, the voice messages that two weeks later, I'll listen to them. I finally listen to that message and I finally do the callback. They never followed up, but I needed the service. So I call back. So imagine what position you guys are in. So make it a habit, maybe just to throw in a quick little, it works, man. Yeah. I mean, imagine you, if you wouldn't have left that message, you are much closer to the potential of, of breakthrough and, and it's not impossible to close these five, six deals a month. It's, it's really not. It's just that activity that you've been working on needs to be multiplied by 10. And then imagine if you leave a hundred messages and you get 10 callbacks and then out of that only 50% of them convert, it's still five closing at any specific month. You know what I mean? Because unfortunately this is not the type of business even though it is, but it's not very common for somebody to say, I'm going to buy a house right now and you close this for the next thing you make all type of money. So the most difficult part is creating your pipeline and building the pipeline is what you guys should be working on every single day. And you guys have the biggest weapon. I'm starting to see a lot of people in, in the older age group, like 40, 45, 50, 55, finally pick up one of these. So right here, you guys are training every single day that you guys need to pick up a book and just read it. I mean, I even I, I think we talked before and you're like, I finally picked up a bunch of books and I'm reading all of them this summer and all that stuff. Right. I, uh, I actually had a book I read already, but it's a good book. And yeah, I'm reading another one for the same episode. Well, you know, I've read it already and this is my third time, but every time I read it, I'm like, I can't believe when I read it the first time, I wasn't at the level of maturity to understand yes, yes. like procrastination and all that stuff. At that point, I was like, let's party or let's, you know, let's do whatever we have to do. Let's, yeah, that's the way I thought it. <laughs> let's just make money and let's move. Now I'm thinking like, damn, how do I accumulate all this wealth that they're talking about? Uh, but I, I guess we all fear it. And then the, this book has a spinoff that's called Outwitting the Devil. Um, I read that book, Outwitting the Devil, and it changed my perspective about religion, not because it was important to me, but just because I feel like every time since I grew up, um, they didn't really put um, like the, the healthy fear. They put the type of fear like if you don't do this, like you're going to die. And when you die, you're going to go to hell. And, and believe it or not, that's like a, a roadblock that we've created. Is there an existence of all those possibilities? Yeah, there is. There always is. We don't know. But the point is that we can't live our life without with fear because if you live with fear, like, yeah, I'm just like, even this morning, I was like, my mortgage payment is $7,700. That's just my mortgage payment. I'm thinking too much. I know. And that's like, I woke up and I'm like, nice, but what do I do now? And it's like, I got to go out and, and make some money. And then everything that can potentially go wrong today went wrong. And I'm like, what do I got to do? Even if my start time was so on point and then all of a sudden it's like, I'm not trying to knock your hustle at me, but oh, you just leave and you leave me with a bunch of things. And I'm like, you got a family. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you know, she wants me to do it. So I get that. And then it's just kind of like, I can relate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's like, even though I'm trying to be such a leader and pass on the delegate the task, it's like, no, I want you to do it, you know? So, um, but at the same time, you know, we are, we got to learn to appreciate what we do have, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So being appreciative and, and I'll tell you the worst thing that can happen is what you, you hit rock bottom, you, you get, you get to rock bottom for me is like, you're negative on bank accounts, your credit sucks, you don't have a car, you haven't made your car payment in two, three, four months. That's rock bottom. But let me tell you something. Once you hit the floor, what, can you go lower than that? You can, but yeah. you got to just bounce back. and. Some of you guys are already there. You guys just got to figure it out. Like, and I'll wrap up with this, uh, just because I want I want Catherine should have already emailed all the um, leads and and I, I want to encourage you guys take advantage of Reddix. I have Reddix. I pay like a thousand dollars a month, and I I you know I know my approach is like if you don't come to me, I don't go to you. But use Reddix. That's dialing about. I think you could do about a hundred. I do a hundred and fifty numbers um, every thirty minutes. You know, that's, that's a dial amount that I have, but use it. It just makes you a much better caller and it's a contact for you. You know what I mean? How, how, how can we get that? Um, you got to talk to Catherine and Edward because they got to give you like a little training. But at that, I, what I tell you, what I'm going to tell but you guys. Have to pay for that? No, no, you guys don't have to pay for it. That's what I'm saying. I know everybody's okay. like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I mean, I pay for a bunch of services that you guys should be using because that's what, those are the tools I use for success. But making those phone calls consistently is so important just because it's all a numbers game. You know what I mean? And, and me, trust me, I'm a door knocker. I love the face-to-face -face interaction, but all the top producers that I that I mastermind with, um, 
they they always tell me you're so crazy because you want a door knock. Like we we call 500 numbers in an hour and you do five doors in 30 <laughs> minutes. But I'm like my conversion is high, but they you know it's just an argument. But the point is that the numbers don't lie. The the statistics show that the real estate community has stopped calling. They're not calling people anymore just because of COVID. They're not calling because they suck at prospecting. They're not calling because they don't practice their script. They're not calling for a million reasons when you guys are doing, or maybe they're, they're not calling because they're procrastinating because they have the fear because they have the fear of no income. Maybe that's the issue, you know, but today let's just make a commitment to not have any fear. I get scared every single morning too. Trust me. Like, um, but the point is that, you know, like we cannot act on fear, you know what I mean? And then you have to understand that you have to have to practice blind faith. You have to believe that these deals are going to develop. You have to believe that all these clients are going to close um, because you guys know that you could have all the faith in the world. But if you don't put a little bit of effort to picking up the phone and dialing, that faith is going to die. You know what I mean? So um, today, let's just do that. No fear. And then let's get this party started. Cause I